Welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston, where we zone in on black and brown relations and our journey to empowering our communities. Hello, welcome to the Empowerment Zone with Ramona Houston, where we look at all aspects of the empowerment of the African-American and Latino communities. And today I'm so excited that I have my cousin, my cousin, Elliot uh, Kirk, who I'm interviewing this morning. Elliot, uh, like myself, we're from Brownwood, Texas, which is a small town in Central Texas. And uh, Elliot is... um, is uh, owner of several and operator of several funeral homes in the state of Texas. And I wanted to have him here uh, specifically because as a business owner and entrepreneur, I'm sure he has a lot of advice for individuals who want to look at business ownership in terms of uh, building wealth and prosperity in the black and brown communities. And so uh, since he's a uh, quite successful business owner, also owning uh, several uh, types of real estate, uh, I think he's a great person to talk to. Uh, He attended the Prairie View A&M University down near Houston, Texas, and uh, with the second best band in the nation, uh, which we'll talk about that later. <laughs> so anyway, uh, he's very close to uh, my beloved brother, Cecil Houston. Uh, and so we're just happy to have him this morning. Hey, cuz, how you doing today? I'm doing well. Greetings to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, I'm excited to have you this morning. And uh, could you tell us a little bit first about uh, how... Uh, you became a business owner and then talk about the growth of your business and give us any uh, advice uh, to the audience about entrepreneurship and business owner ownership and what you would advise for us who want to go into it. But start from the beginning on how you got into uh, business ownership and specifically the funeral home business. Right. So uh, how we got started, how I got started was, uh, of course, I grew up in a house where my mother went to mortuary school uh, when I was uh, eight, when I was in the third grade. And uh, kind of just being around her and seeing her help families throughout the years and uh, not being able, she has always wanted to own a funeral home but uh, wasn't able to ever get it off the ground because of uh, she wasn't couldn't get the financial backing. And uh, back in the 80s, they wasn't, you know, allowing women in the funeral business to, you know, succeed at all. It's kind of held them down, especially being a, a, an African-American woman. It was hard for her to, to succeed in the funeral business in Brownwood, especially because uh, because of you know her race, I think, and her gender, of course. So they only allowed her to work when an African American uh, passed away in the community. So me being around that and seeing that for years uh, kind of sparked my interest in it. Uh, and then after I graduated and went to college, uh, she still worked. Uh, she had to travel to Fort Worth to, to actually work in the funeral business. Uh, because they wouldn't allow her to work in Brownwood. So uh, after I uh, graduated college, I decided, you know, to go to mortuary school and, uh, you know, kind of make a difference in the, the African-American community in our area uh, in Brownwood. So that's kind of how we got started. And uh, after I got out of college, I went to mortuary school. Uh, I graduated from mortuary school and started a career in the funeral business and, uh, we were able to uh, instill the, the community would contact my mom for services whenever an African-American would pass away. And then she would call the funeral home and then they would allow her to work just to pull the family in. So, you know, my thinking was, hey, mom, you're, you're already servicing this community. Why not we open up our own place and we can service them? Uh, and that's kind of how we got started. So uh, we started uh, doing, we found an old funeral home that was closed down and uh, it was African-American uh, owned funeral home. And 
the owner had lived around the corner and he just didn't have the help to operate it and, and the support from the community. So we went in and uh, he allowed us to open the place and uh, only charged us, you know, as we had business, we give them a commission on the funeral service. And that's kind of, that's how we got started. And uh, of course we all still had our full-time jobs and the first year, I think we we only serviced two or three families the whole entire year. Uh, and then from that, we just kept growing and growing and growing. And now we're serving over, you know, close to 300 a year. So going back to the challenges of your mom um, getting funding, when you came in bo- on board, had the situation changed where y'all were able to get funding or did y'all have to self-fund? How did y'all, uh, how did y'all go about getting the capital needed to um, uh, go into business? Right. So uh, like I said, we, we all still have full-time jobs, so we work. And, uh, you know, my mom's dream was to have a big, a big fancy funeral homes that, that people see all the time. Um, but my thinking was, Mom, we can't afford that. Let's start small and let's grow. So what happened was uh, that funeral home that we we started in was a little it was a little house funeral home, uh, but our business model was most African American uh, funerals are held at the churches anyway. So our model was uh, we're going to have the services at the churches anyway. So we're going to pick the deceased up. We're going to do the preparation work at the funeral home. We're going to meet with the families at their houses. Uh, and then we're going to have the services at the funeral home. So, but to answer your question, we self-funded uh, until we got enough capital and enough, you know, records and good bookkeeping and, until we were able to start approaching the banks and get funding. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So um, when did you, uh, how many years did y'all work before you purchased your first, your, your own funeral home? And then how did it grow from there? So uh, before we were able to purchase a funeral home was, let's see, 2005, about 16 years before we were able to get a substantial amount of money, you know, funding. It's very hard, uh, man. I, I tell people our story all the time. I mean, it, it was, it was hard, very hard, and uh, I mean, I mean, it's still hard, but it was really hard in the beginning. Uh, the first ten years, it was, you know, kind of we worked. Uh, we still had our own jobs, and uh, we were. I was able to go full time uh, in two thousand and twelve. Um, before that, you know, we still worked. Uh, we all had other jobs and side hustles and everything. So, but uh, I'm rambling everywhere. No, it, it, this is a good story because a lot of times, you know, when we go into business as uh, African American and Latino uh, individuals, uh, one of the hardest uh, challenges to overcome is the access to capital. And, you know, we have to have strategies for that and overcoming the difficulty of staying resilient in spite of the fact that we don't see success immediately. You know, when you talk about you all working consistently and persistently over a long period of time until you saw your uh, your vision into fruition, that's really incredible. And then also that that obstacle of not having access to capital that y'all kept going and, and self and, and decided to self fund until you could get it off the, the ground. And that's a story. Uh, that we uh, as uh, business owners uh, definitely need to hear. So when did the uh, clouds start parting for y'all uh, in terms of when you started saying, okay, we're, 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 we're seeing a substantial amount of growth. I, I can, we can see the light now finally. Right. So uh, in 2005, we opened our first place. Uh, and it was in Coleman, Texas, which was a, a town between Brownwood and Abilene. Uh, at the time, there was no African American owned funeral homes in this area. Uh, and we were labeled, uh, although we were, we were servicing all types, we wanted to take 
the advantage of the net to being the, the only African American uh, owned firm. So we wanted to service all of you know the African Americans. That was our goal. Well, uh, in the meantime, the, the African Americans were still going to the other firms and not using our services because we were too small. Uh, but we just kept at it and kept at it. And then we were kind of, we were labeled as uh, a black funeral home. And we didn't want that label in this area because there's not enough African Americans to support a funeral home in this area just by itself, you know? So uh, we, we had to overcome that obstacle of being labeled as a black funeral home. And, and to this day, we are still uh, labeled as that. Uh, but uh, we we service more Caucasians than African Americans. So, uh, in 2005 we started uh, the first place. In 2008 we moved into Abilene, which is a, a more populated area, uh, and we still didn't have funding at that time. It was you know self paid. We had a small building. My mom still didn't like it. She wanted this big fancy place, and but. Uh, you know, reality was we can't afford it, mom, but we can start here and we can grow up to it. So in 2008, we opened a place in Abilene, uh, which was called Dove Funeral Home. Uh, and then in 2010, we were able to actually open a facility in Brownwood, uh, which is called Brownwood Funeral Home, and that's where we're from. So, uh, so then at that point, we had three locations, one in Brownwood, one in Coleman, and one in Abilene. Well, in 2011, the owner of the funeral home of the, the building in Coleman passed away. So at that point, his kids got involved, and we uh, decided to just close that building down. Um, and then we had the one in Abilene and the one in, Col in Brownwood. So at that point, we had grew our caseload probably to about from the first year to three, from three the whole year to about 60 for the year. And then at, at that point in 2010 was when uh, we started seeing, uh, you know, an increase in revenue and okay, well now we need to start looking at some different options. And we were still labeled as an African-American firm uh, at, at that time. So, we kind of changed our business model at that point uh, to target, um, you know, the, the lower economical, um, you know, people, white, brown, black, everyone. And that's kind of how we changed our business model at that point to get our call volume to go up more as well, get more involved in, in the community at that point in Brownwood and in Abilene. And then that was in 2010. So from 2010 up until 2018, uh, we're still self-funded. But at that point, the business was supporting itself at that point. And I was able to go full-time uh, here. I have, I have a couple of uh, administrative assistants. Uh, and, yeah, we did, we did pretty pretty good from 2010 to 2018. And then in 2018, we were able to get funding to buy uh, a $1.2 million facility. And uh, we built our own crematory at that point. And it's, it's crazy is the facility that we bought was a historical uh, funeral home here in Abilene, the oldest funeral home here. Uh, it was always owned by, you know, Caucasians. And uh, everyone in this town uh, has suspected us to fail because of the ownership in this in in the business and we've doubled our calls since ownership to now that's an incredible story so looking at your experiences what um advice do you give to business owners or anybody that wants to pursue entrepreneurship and business ownership Mainly, uh, if, if you want to per, pursue entrepreneurship or own a business, you have to always remember that it's, it's your dream, it's your business. No one else is going to see your vision. No one. I mean, your closest people to you. And you have to, you know, it, it doesn't, you know, you have, if it's your vision, go for it. Uh, 
Uh-oh. If it's your vision, go for it. Uh, do not stop. You know, just keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it regardless of what anyone says. Just keep at it. And uh, just don't stop. That's great advice. Uh, persistence and consistency. Uh, consistency. Um, do you uh, have any other recommendations in terms of just the process of business ownership? Do you think there's any specific steps that people should take or anything? Uh, yeah, from, from my from you know my experience from from the beginning, don't try to beat the system. There's no way around the system. It ain't. There's no way around it. I've t- I turned all corners and I tried to not pay taxes. I tried to get around it. And you cannot grow without doing that. I mean, you can you can beat the system. And that's and I think that's one of the uh, uh, drawbacks that we as African Americans have is trying to beat the system. Yeah, I, I can have a pocket full of money and beat the system, but 10 years from now, uh, you know, when my son is 16 or 18 years old, I may have a bunch of money, but he's not going to have anything because I've been beating the system all these years. And now uh, it's time for him to take the business over and he has no capital. He has anything because I've been beating the system all these years. And now I can't leave anything behind for, you know, people coming up. So I, I, my advice is to, uh, you know, if you can afford a CPA, uh, you know, get a CPA, uh, get, you know, that that's their job. That's their profession. Uh, if you don't know how to do it yourself, I have no clue about numbers. I have no clue about, you know, taxes. So I hired a CPA to take care of that for me. And uh, that's my advice is, is to try not to beat the system, play by the rules. If you play by the rules, you know, you'll be all right. And just keep at it. Just keep at it. Just, you know, just keep at it. Great advice. Great advice. Well, uh, we really, any other things you final thoughts you have? I mean, I can't believe uh, our time is almost up. This, this has been an incredible conversation, Elliot. Uh, any, anything else you want to close out and say to our audience? Uh, just if you have dreams of, you know, being owner ownership or entrepreneurship, go for it. Don't wait until next year. Do it now. Start now and just, I mean, I've, I've started businesses and it didn't make it, but you just got to keep going until you find your niche. You know, even if it's not working out, just keep at it. You'll find, you know, if you keep at something long enough, it, it'll it'll work out for you. You just got to keep at it. Even my dad, you know, having pigs when we were growing up, just keep at it. Just keep at it. That's, I mean, just work and have fun during the process and enjoy the process. Not, don't just wait till, you know, 10 years when I, when I do this 10 years from now, I'll be, uh, I'll be good 10 years. No, be good while you're doing it. You know, enjoy yourself while you're doing it and enjoy the time and the process and it'll all work out. And that's it. That's it. Enjoy the process and have fun as you build. Don't don't delay your happiness for tomorrow. That's great. Yeah. Uh, great advice, Elliot. Well, thanks, cuz. I appreciate you. I, I want to talk more about some other your other um, uh, ventures in terms of real estate and everything um, and the other things you're doing in terms of how you give back to the community and philanthropy and all of that. But if uh, if you will, I hope you'll come back and join us at another time so we can have that extens- extended conversation. Most definitely, cousin. All right, thanks. You All have right, a great day. You. you too. Talk to you later. Love you. Okay. Bye-bye. Love you too. Tell the family I said hey. Will do. Okay. Love Bye-bye. you. A special thank you to the incredible team of the Empowerment Zone. Terry on Gully, theme song. NADWORKS, digital support, and of course, our featured guest. If you enjoyed my podcast, please subscribe. We are on all of your favorite podcast platforms. Be sure to rate us on Apple Podcasts too. Thank you for your continued support.